Hello, <clears throat> how is everyone this evening? Yes, I know it is very late. I just got home from work. I did not expect to be there as long as I was, but whatever. Let us <clears throat> go ahead and get started <clears throat> with the Salisbury steaks and crispy potato pancakes. One thing I will say <clears throat> is that I did the potato pancakes, uh, I did the potato part earlier. All I did was boil some potatoes. I sauteed the uh, minced, diced, uh, minced onion, mixed it with some garlic and some parmesan. That was it. I even tried to get as much of the um, oil out of the onion as I could because that's not what you're supposed to do. For the Salisbury steak, I'm going to actually grate an onion because it really breaks down the cellular walls really quickly. Guarantee those tiny, tiny little bits. <clears throat> Is this, uh, okay, no. outer skin is not something I want to use tonight. So. Yep. Okay. Get some handcuffs. I need handcuffs. I'm very, very low. Actually, yeah. No. Yeah. Small onion. Oh, yeah. uh, We're going to put in some Dijon. <clears throat> some Worcestershire sauce, which is one of my absolute favorite things. I keep forgetting it even exists and I don't know why. Hey, Indy. And I'm forever forgetting that stuff exists. And then every time I'm rem I, every time I'm re remember it exists, I'm in love again. Ignore that. Doing, uh, I'm trying a refrigerator bread recipe, so y'all won't see that. But you know, especially because I don't like it so far. Um, the other night I tried it; it was really stodgy. <clears throat> So I still had half the dough. So now I split it in half again and it's been out on the counter the last like hour or two so it can rise and it's not rising. So this might be stodgy as well. But follow the directions. I don't have a whole lot of instincts when it comes to baking because I don't really bake. So but pretty sure it's gonna be bad. So we'll see. You do always get a good rise <clears throat> if you start in an oven that's off. You do get that one final rise. And last time I baked the bread, it was <clears throat> um, fresh from the fridge. So it was very cold. This time I had a chance to warm up a little bit. So we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna judge until it's done. That's in there, that's in there. Way more pepper than you actually need. <clears throat> but like I tell everyone, salt and pepper to taste. We like a lot of pepper. So, yeah. Not a cup. Now, for something I hate. <clears throat> yep. 
several recipes I've consulted in videos and stuff, and most of them have said to use it. There's just a little bit, <clears throat> add a little bit of sweetness to balance out the savoriness. Guess we're going for that umami flavor. And our meat. I'm trying to think if that's everything. That's everything. This is actually very similar to a meatball recipe with the breadcrumbs and the onions and blah, 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 blah. So. It smells really good. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, when I finish mixing everything, I'm gonna make it into patties and I'm gonna put the patties probably Four small ones, need more breadcrumbs. <clears throat> this is too wet, I know mean, it's too wet. You definitely don't want it to be wet, but you don't want it to be dry. You want it that good in between. So, there we go. That's a nice size. Divide that into two. Add in the two patties, I'm gonna do this one. I've got two pans right here. One's gonna be for the patties, the other is going to be for the frying the potatoes, which we'll get out, we'll get those out in just a second. Fun thing about these patties though, I'm not cooking them all the way yet. out the way. Here's a good wash. Portobello mushrooms, because we're definitely going to fancy this sauce up. To cut these in thin strips. Actually, I only need one of them. I'll find a use for the second one, don't worry. Now that they're in nice thin strips all the way across, I'm going to do the same thing, essentially making small pieces. About a quarter, about a half inch or so. <clears throat> Big. Get, we're going to need some plates for tonight. <clears throat> Bread crumbs, and I'll put those in a bowl. Actually, I'll use bowls for everything. You can smell the bread, it doesn't smell that bad. It smells nice and yeasty. I'm not going to make the gravy from scratch. I'm going to actually use some brown gravy mix that I have. 
just because I want to get rid of it. I'm going to do two. I do have a bunch of seasoning blends and stuff up here that I'm never going to fucking use. So if you know me, ask me for them, I'll just give them to you. Because I found the recipes and proportions that I like for most of the things. So. Here are the potatoes. Just no butter, no cream, no oils added to it. I just wanted to get them, you know, cooked. When that's done, I'm gonna give you like one more minute. I'm waiting for the outside edges to just start to turn brown. They're not going to be cooked all the way through. They're going to finish cooking off in the sauce. And I'm not going to do any rice with it to go with it, but you can do rice, mashed potato, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do the potato cakes. So. This is, again, chives, potatoes, onions, um, let's say, chai, potatoes, onions, garlic, that's all this is, and then egg them, okay. smell that. If you get a good bit on the bottom, <clears throat> that's good. That's a hundred percent which is what I'm going for right now. I want that fine on the bottom. Because <clears throat> as soon as this is done, in like two more minutes, these are going in here and the mushrooms are gonna go in the pan. Let's get my potato pancakes. This is a great way to use leftover mashed potatoes, but you do need to be careful and I want to mix some flour in with it just a little bit because depending on how much um, <clears throat> cream and butter you added to the potatoes, because these are holding their shape very well, they're going to stay the shape, and cream and butter inhibit that. I'm going to fry them in like a shallow, like a shallow fry in oil so I can get, after I brush them, as I put them in the uh, eggs and breadcrumbs, get them nice and crispy and eat it all the way through. I'm not doing them too big. You can do them as big or small as you like. Just make sure they're all about the same size. And there's Parmesan in here too, just make it a little bit cheesy. You can why not? And Parmesan is a hard cheese, so it actually helps act a little bit as a binder. Give it a build up on the bottom of the pan now. That's fine. This is what we want. I'm just going to actually pop these in this bowl. It's the same bowl that everything was mixed in. There's no reason in dirtying up another bowl. It's already dirty. It's the exact same flavors. Everything's cooking together. Might as well. Get the most out of it. Now I'm gonna turn this down some because I don't want to burn these. Add some oil. Oops. 
since I'm making these into a gravy, I'm not really to 100% concerned with browning them. I just want to get them all nice and cooked through and softened. If I was browning them, I would never add this many to the pan at once. Because you see all the steam coming out of the pan right now? That is steam. When you're browning, you're actually using the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is what happens when you brown food. Brown food tastes good. So, Steam and Maillard do not mix. They are not friends. They will never be friends. This is a thing. Steam stops Maillard. Steam will win. Got our oil in the pan there. Pretty salt this, right? Yeah. You can always add some onions to this if you want. But, you know, it's up to you. Onions, garlic, mushrooms, all really good friends. Turn the heat on to this. Start getting that heated through. This one's full. This one's not full. Let's use the first ones. Get out. Let's take it out. Again, when you crack eggs, good hard crack. <clears throat> like it's a flat surface. Don't crack on the edge of your bowl. That's how you get a shell on your shit. Nobody wants shell on their shit. You know, it won't hurt you. It's just a little crunchy. But still. Salt in there. So if you don't have Dijon in your house, I highly recommend it. Hey Bonnie, hey Mark, because it is a powerhouse. It brings a lot of different flavors to a lot of different dishes. And you don't really ever use a whole lot of it, so you're good. Like, I bought like two bottles in the last two years. That's how infrequently we use it. breadcrumbs I made. So, just toasted off bread, put it in the oven, it was going to go bad. So put that shit in the oven for like an hour and a half on the lowest setting my oven had, just to get it nice and dry, then I put it in the um, blender. Just a couple minutes, made croutons. We made, um, what are, what are they called? Breadcrumbs, blah. Words are hard, y'all. It's been a long day today. Okay. How long has it been? Stir in a cup of cold water, bring to a boil, stir and reduce heat, simmer. Okay. I'm doing two of these. So what I'm going to do is actually two and let's say a quarter cup. So I'm going to let this simmer for a bit. I don't want that to really mess anything up. So I want the consistency to be correct. 
but you know. And he's moving. If you want to do this in an even cheaper way, this costs the same amount as the actual uh, mushroom gravy. So you can buy that. Or buy one of each and just mix it together. I love brown gravy, honestly. I know how to make my own. It's just a simple volute, which we've done on here several times. Just make a roux and mix it with stock or broth instead of um, milk and you're good. Oh, that shit's so lumpy. But all the lumps go away once it gets in here. So. I don't think it wanted it boiling that fast. <laughs> that sound good. Let this boil for just a minute, come back at the temperature, then I'm going to lower it down to about medium low, then put those in and let them simmer for about the next 10, 15 minutes. So, you can always test your oil by adding a little bit of your batter to it, or you can add a drop of water, which can be dangerous. So, you use a stick, put a stick in, if it starts bubbling like crazy immediately, then you're good. That did not. So this isn't good yet. Just another minute. I think this has the maltodextrin and everything in it. <clears throat> Probably xanthan gum. Uses a thickener. What is it? What are you using as a thickener? Hydrolyzed corn gluten. Yeah. And flour. Okay. And maltodextrin. I knew it. Fucking knew it was maltodextrin in there, too. <clears throat> Maltodextrin's kind of cool. It can, if you, you can buy it like straight from um, like Amazon. Stuff like that it's great because it has a lot of uses when it comes to the um, like molecular gastronomy because you can take any kind of oil that you have mix it in maltodextrin make a powder out of it sift it and you can use that as like a flavoring like on Doritos or any kind of chips basically they do that a lot <clears throat> they'll infuse the leftover bits of certain items like mushrooms, for example, in oil, get the oil all nice and mushroomy, then they'll go ahead and mix it with some malt, uh, straight out the mushrooms, mix it with some maltodextrin, mix that shit up, and call it a day. Pop these in here. Yeah, these are not I'm trying to stay together. They're not cooked. Juices in there. Okay, turn that down. Just flip, just so we can get all the sides nice and wet. That's on medium, medium, low. That makes sense. It's on a four right now. It's about to go down to a three. So get this flipped because I don't like. Oh, it just fell the fuck apart, didn't you? As long as you flip, I don't give a shit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to check this again. I'm getting a good bit of bubblage. So I think I'm about ready. My penne station. I need a plate with some paper towels. Normally, we put um, <clears throat> before you do a regular penne, we put the um, flour, egg, then breadcrumb. This, since it's already so starchy, doesn't really need any of that extraness. So, we're not going to be too extra. 
Scoop that up. Shake off the excess. Right in there. Toss it around. Now I have one hand that is still dry. Yeah, those are bubbling very nicely. <clears throat> Another reason bowls come in handy for stuff like this. Just very gently. Coerce them on if you, if you need to. Any kind of breadcrumbs will really work on this. You can do whatever you want. I was going to do panko, but I'm fucking out. Did not know that, so let's go on the list now. Get the fourth one in. And then I'm going to flip. Just let this simmer away over here. We're done with this completely until we're, until we're ready to eat. So. Whenever you deep fry something, a little sprinkle of salt as soon as it comes out. I don't understand it. I was like, it makes it stick. Well, it helps it stick better. I'm like, I, I, I just don't argue about it. I don't fucking get it. That's something I've been meaning to Google forever. Normally, when you're told to do something like that, the reasoning is explained. I've heard that a hundred fucking times, minimal, and it's never once been explained to me. So, what's that? Ooh. I found shell. Shit happens. Just went into the bathroom. My husband's taking a bath to help relax. <clears throat> also, guys, if you have limited ingredients, like limited, like you know, breadcrumbs kind of thing, like I kind of do right now, bowls are the way to go. It just, everything just works out so much better. Everything stays nice in the center. My hands were dripping. tell as these are getting warmer they're getting softer so I'm trying to hurry along I'm not ready yet. Yeah, just want to get 
give these about a minute, two minutes, or two minutes. So you get that nice golden brown color that everybody loves so much. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Next to last one. Last. Last one. Wash my hands officially. <clears throat> All that excess water off there. Okay, how are you doing over here? Looking good, nice and soupy. Now, growing up whenever we had this, I always had it over bread kind of thing, which is what I want to do tonight. So just put it on some bread, on a plate, serve it up. Crispy potato pancakes. Yum. Okay. Uh, I think I'm pretty much done at this point. I guess I'm gonna mess up. Okay. Um, I'm gonna let that go for about two off of the burner. Just be safe. Okay. I think I'll let that go for about another maybe 10 minutes or so, if that. Um, cause I feel like they're cooked all the way at this point. Cause, you know, they have been basically like um, braising. So, <sighs> but yes, I'm tired, I'm hungry. And I'm probably gonna be going out of town tomorrow. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Cause I got a text earlier and we'll see. But <clears throat> yes. Thank y'all for watching. Um, be sure to uh, follow me or send me a friend request. I, I'll pretty much add anybody at this point. I don't give a shit. So, um, do not try to slide into my DMs. I will hurt your. I will hurt your feelings, and I will giggle about it with my husband. So, you know who the hell you are. So, yeah, how'd that work out for you? But. Yes, um, <clears throat> I'm going to serve these with a little bit of like sour cream on top just to add the, um, like that creaminess and that richness back that you're not getting in the potatoes because you didn't add the butter or cream. So, add a little bit of sour cream, you get the creaminess and the richness. There you go. So, but thank y'all for tuning in. I hope to see y'all again soon. I am at some point this week gonna do um, a Japanese katsu curry. Uh, I've done it before, but I did it with um, chicken. I'm gonna do it with pork this time, like it's supposed to be. I have some pork for carnitas, and that would be absolutely perfect for those, especially deep fried. Oh my God, yes. I'm gonna need more panko. And, yeah, and Salisbury steak. There's a couple of different things I was thinking of doing this week. I haven't really decided on much yet. So, Arancini was one. 
I'm gonna be doing arancini this week. Um, that's using leftover rice to make deep fried balls. This, the whole week's about deep frying. I don't know how to think about it. Yeah. We don't really deep fry here. I mean, y'all know. Y'all have seen me cook. I don't really deep fry things. I mean, I can, obviously. I mean, get those better in frame. There you go. But, you know, I just don't want to do it. <clears throat> so. But. Uh, follow me just so you can see what I post and things like that. And I do post memes. I'm funny sometimes. Bye.